But we definitely got a whole bucket load of minutes to review. Go Mary. Yeah, yeah, something. And thank you, Hannah, for getting in the October one. Yeah, nice. And that was nicely done, I would say. It was. Yeah, no problem. Mary's were quite well done, too. Yeah. Hmm. Not, not timely. And I'd gone through and pulled down. I looked at the online, at the Town of Waitley website for planning board minutes. And in any case in 2021, where there were posted approved minutes, I downloaded those to the OneDrive folder, if only so that we could go through folder by folder and tell whether or not there were approved minutes that were posted. There's Don. Hello, Don. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay. Well, it looks like we have a quorum and it is five o'clock. So I'm going to open the meeting. Woohoo. Um, the first item on the agenda is the gas line, Berkshire gas line over on uh, Long Plain Road. And what they'd like to do is to uh, pour a concrete pad in there and put up two basically um, hoop type protection areas, sort of like a hoop greenhouse. Um, I'll bring, share up the, get up the. Uh... So have they submitted a site plan approval? They're, they're, they're requesting a, a, um, a waiver of a site plan review because it's such a simple uh, situation. Screen here. So Don, they're covering existing tanks with the so they're adding tanks to uh, they're adding coverage to tanks that are already on site and in place. No, this is just uh, for storage of something. They didn't even say what. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so can you see this? Okay, so where they want to put it is right on here. And if we a minute. So here's a. Huh. Um, sorry, Don, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Could whoever the host of the meeting is start recording the meeting? It is recording. Is it? Yep. Oh my it's gosh. Recording. I am so sorry. That's my And we have transcript. Great. Okay. My fault. I'm so sorry. Please continue. No okay. Uh, so here's Long Plain Road over here. And the entrance to the LNG uh, plant is right here. And there's a gateway right here, and they want to put the they want to pour the concrete pads right in here, and then put the two whoop things on there. I think I've got hmm. ah. Ah. this is uh, let's see. Oh boy. So this is a blow up of the area I just showed you. The, the road is out here. Here's that. Okay. And oh, I'm sorry, the road is out this way. This thing's upside down. Okay. So Long Plain Road is out here. This is the gate into the place. And when you came come in and turn to the left, this is where the 20 by 60 pad would be with an apron. Okay. And then a little further down, these are the structures they're gonna put in. Two of them 20 feet long. And they're going to put concrete blocks in here and then pour concrete across there. You, is it clear what the setback is? Oh, they're way off the road. Uh, yes. I'd have to go onto Google Earth to, to measure it, but. Okay. If, Don, if you show the, your first photograph, um, it shows how far off the road it is. It shows yeah. it's far, but it's... Oh, okay. Back up here. It just says a sight gate there. Existing roadway. No, it doesn't oh. say how far what? back it is. And what's so the, the photograph? 
What zone is it in? It looks like it's in the industrial. Yeah. Industrial. It might be commercial industrial. I see. I'm just looking at the assessor at the uh, ArcGIS map. Yeah. What, how, why don't you go ahead and use the, the measure tool and see how far back that is? Let me just see. So I'm just trying to figure out which. So it's 300 and it's 360 long plane? Yeah. I mean, you could easily pick it out there on that. Oh, I, on the accessor map, you can bring up a background map if you don't have that. Yeah. <laughs> my, my fluency with the assessor's map is, uh, I, oh, I see imagery, imagery with. Over on the left, there's one of the things you can choose. Oh yeah, I think I just made it happen. So actually, Sarah, would you be able to let me share my screen? I have to unshare mine. Oh yeah, if you unshare yours, then I'll show people this. Um, so I'm sharing this. All right. So you should all. Okay, so right in the center is where that LNG thing is. Yep. Yeah, this right here. So it's this yep. parcel, and here's Long Plan. Of course, here's town offices. Yep. And so if you up go here, and here's the road. Yeah. If you okay. go up to the top. Top right, up above. Yep. Left a little, go right a little bit, and there's a, a little measuring stick. Oh, yeah, I found it. Okay, so I found the measuring stick, and you want me to measure what, from the edge of the road back? Yeah, back to the edge of the woods. Uh, distance in feet. So, like, like, whoop. Okay. Click down and then look. click down. And well, click on the map and then drag it. Oh, I see. Click on the map. <laughs> okay. All right. Area. I'm just trying to do distance. Why is this still moving? Sorry, folks. <laughs> Obviously, I have to learn to do the, uh, the measuring tool. Yeah, I want to do it in feet. All right. So how come I can't? Does somebody I else? Don't... Try double clicking. Oh, double clicking. Let's see. Well, I. I'm oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I got it. Thank you. I'm going to get better at this in time, folks. All right, that's 300. I'm sorry. That's um about 350 feet. Good guess, Don. So did that answer people's question? I'm going to clear that. Yep, thank you very much. Okay. And so that's all they're adding um, is uh, come in and in this parcel, just a concrete pad. Right. And then a hoop structure over it to protect some kind of bins. Well, it seems well screened, well within setbacks. Appropriate to zoning. Almost for that, it does seem like a whole site review and public hearing would be a huge waste of time. So, Hello, is here. to uh, wave. So, you're making a motion, Don? Um, sure, I will make a motion to waive site plan review. I'll second that. Okay. Any other discussion from the board? Any discussion from members of the community? Okay, we'll, we'll have a roll call. Don, yes. Sarah? Yes. Brent? Yes. Tom? Yes. Judy? Yes. Okay, the motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. All right. Excuse me, Don. Uh, um, Mary is a little late to the party here. Uh, which uh, were we just approving the waiver for? The waiver for LNG, Berkshire Gas LNG, the very first item. 
Do we need to provide any specific documentation to them? I will just write them a letter. Okay. Will you, are you, will you do it like electronically so we can save a copy? Yes. Okay, great. Do it on Word and I'll send it around for comments first and then I'll shoot it off to them. Okay, sounds good. And I'll make a folder for 360 long plane just for the record. Okay. Um, the next item is uh, Christian Lane Green Jeans update. And that would be Julie. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Perfect. Yes. Great. I had my headphones in today. Um, I just wanted to provide the board with an update to our proposed um, site plans. I had sent a copy along an email. I believe it was posted under the agenda. Um, would the board like me to share my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Everyone can see that? Yep. Great. So thank you very much for the, the letter comments from the board and, and from Judy. Um, definitely took those comments seriously and made some changes here uh, to accommodate snow removal. And also we pulled in the fence significantly from the property line. You can see just starting at the bottom here with the storage metal barn, uh, we reduced that size about 10 feet um, to south to be able to have adequate space between that and the next proposed greenhouse. Uh, we have at least 10 feet space between each structure now. Um, we also have additional space between the existing barn and the proposed barn, that's 12 feet there. And then we did pull the fence in. Um, I met with Chief Hannum last week or the week before and uh, just wanted to make sure that we do have enough space between the edges of the existing greenhouse and the proposed fence. And he had said that 15 feet width would be adequate there. So that is what we have. Um, and we also, uh, the landowner had requested that the fence be pulled in from the north so that it doesn't impact the field there. So we did pull that fence in where it was previously at the 500 foot setback it's now uh, 30 feet farther back from the school. Okay, well, Julie, one thing that didn't get um, dimensioned in here is you've got uh, the third, the, the three or the two greenhouses uh, where it shows area to be blocked off by metal gate. Yes. Okay, you've got 39 feet over to the edge, but you never show 50 feet over to the the limit of what can be used on the greenhouse? Um, that 50 foot line, the, the setback line, is that what you're referring to, Don? Yeah, but it doesn't, it doesn't label it anywhere, I don't think. Yeah, we can add that lay. Oh, I'm sorry, it's right here at the top. Okay. 50 foot setback where my cursor is. So right. yep. it Never. is hard. There's a lot going on, yeah. but um, they are up. there. Yeah. Julie, are you going to have to do setback, septic work? No, no septic work. Nope. The other thing I wanted to address in the letter, just for the board's knowledge, um, there was a comment about fence being required with marijuana establishments by the state. And that's actually not true. Just so the board knows, uh, the only time that a fence is required by the state is when you have an outdoor marijuana grow and we're doing an indoor greenhouse marijuana grow here. So a fence is not required as part of the establishment, but we do have one just for added security given the proximity to the neighbors and also as screening. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention, because I don't believe any of the other establishments in town have done inspections by the state and their final license. The one thing that the state inspectors look at is to make sure that there are no um, vegetative uh, screening where people would hide within them, like outside of the fence, where people would be able to hide or be able to climb up a tree over the fence. That's something that would prevent a cultivator from receiving their final license. 
if the state inspector comes and sees something, um, some kind of bush or planting where somebody could hide. Interesting. I've he I heard they're very strict when they come do their inspections, so I just want to make the, the board aware of that. And okay. yeah. So I think that's all the, the updates I have. Um, unless the board has any comments or questions, I'd be happy to hear them. So let me understand. So is really the, well, why do you, we had, we had asked, I mean, of course, the one question had to do with the 50 foot setback variances, right? But that's what you were going to the ZBA about. So could you just share what uh, you believe transpired at the ZBA meeting? Yeah, sure. So between the first ZBA hearing and the last one that we had, we withdrew our variance application. So we discussed with the board how we believe that because there's no cultivate, no cultivation use occurring outside of the 50 foot setbacks that we believe that we're in compliance with the zoning bylaw. And the, the zoning board, one of the members actually read the definition and it did match with the site plan that we have here. So we believe that we're in compliance. The site, the zoning board is coming to look at the site on Saturday and look at the existing structures. And so they're, they've yet to make a determination, but that was the discussion last meeting. All right, so there's some discrepancy between the ZBA and the planning board then in terms of how the, the marijuana establishment is defined relative to security fences and setbacks. Um, so that's, that's not entirely clear, Brent. They were discussing whether cultivation extends further so clarify that, Judy, so I'm trying to understand, like, like, for example, let's look at, just for sake of argument, let's look at greenhouse number three on this plan, which is, the, yeah, you can just point that out, Julie, to help us, yeah, that one. Um, so if I understand, if I'm reading this right, the greenhouse itself extends um, to the left and to the right beyond the 50 foot setbacks. Is that correct? The outer borders, the, um, I guess the east and west ends of greenhouse number three are about the east, the west one is about 30.2 feet in from the property line, if I'm reading this right, and the west. I'm sorry, the east side is about 39.1 feet in from the property line. Is that right, Julie? Yes, that's right. So the, the farthest that the greenhouse or any greenhouse sticks out from that westerly 50 foot setback line is 19 feet here. Right. But the, the one thing I didn't discuss is that we are proposing to put a metal gate inside of the greenhouses with a single swing door in order to ensure that there's no cultivation happening outside of those 50 foot setbacks. So in those gray cross hatched areas on either end of greenhouse number three is illustrated here. Those gray hatched areas are fully enclosed within the greenhouse, is that correct? That's correct. Um, and so you're going to build internal fencing within the greenhouse at the 50 foot setback lines on the east and the west, you know, you know, the virtual lines inside the greenhouse. Is that correct? Yep, that's correct. They will be physical barriers, almost like a secondary wall um, inside a secondary sidewall inside, so that uh, that that gray space that you see will be completely empty. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's your assertion that by limiting cultivation to that, let's say, bluish area within greenhouse number three, within the, the 50 foot setback lines, 
simply by um, reducing cultivation. You'll have a larger structure, a structure that will extend beyond the setback <clears throat> boundaries, but um, you're, you're taking the position that it's only the area under cultivation that, um, that sh to which the setback, the 50 foot setback should apply. Is that an accurate statement of your position? Yeah. Okay. And that follows all the way, that's same for greenhouse number two, two. which again, and greenhouse yeah. number one, it looks like for greenhouse number one, it's western edge is on the 50 foot setback line, um, but the eastern edge is beyond. So again, there's a gray, gray crosshatched area of non-cultivation. Right. Julie, so, Julie, do those gray areas already exist or are they to be built? No, they already exist. So those are existing greenhouses and the landowner's understanding from the last time that this application came before the board is that those greenhouses would be blocked off with plastic. And I think our proposal is a little stronger in that regard. Um, it'll cost them thousands of dollars uh, removing and replacing pipes, um, propane tank, like it'll cost them thousands of dollars to have to shorten those greenhouses. And that wasn't their understanding of, of what was approved previously. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Well, I'm still just exploring. Maybe this is a question for you as chair, Don. Um, so we have not yet scheduled a public hearing on this application. No, that's what we're gonna to try to determine this evening. That's right. Um, and then I wanna, so is that really the logical next step? Like perhaps we should make a motion to schedule uh, a public hearing and then have a discussion about that. I do we do that? Do we make motions to schedule public hearings or we just agree? Well, first, I think you might want to ask for comments from the anybody in the audience. That's a good point. So and, and I would also like to say that they don't have a determination of the setback variance yet. Well, they've, they've removed the setback variance. No, well, it's not 100%. They do not have a determination formally that this is acceptable, adequate, and that, uh, I'm sorry, they don't have approval of the, of the plan, but yes, you're right. They have removed the variance request. Okay, uh, is there any more questions from the board at this point? Any questions from the public? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Uh, is Michael? This is Mike Becta. Yes, this is the same question I asked at the ZBA meeting, and I'm gonna ask it here for your interpretation of those gray areas that are gonna be blocked off by a chain link fence that they say the cultivation only takes place in the light blue area but yet exhaust fans for the use in the cultivation of said same uh, blue area is attached outside of that put set back. In the term use, uh, nobody has really come up with a definitive because in my mind, if those fans are being used to exhaust for the cultivation fact in those areas, is that not considered use for growing of that marijuana? I don't think so. I think growing uh, consumes uh, being in some sort of growth medium, uh, dirt or hydroponic or something, but I don't think uh, it's considered growth if, if, if the air just moves into a, an area that uh, where the marijuana is growing. But that said area is using exhaust fans to regulate temperature and humidity within that area, which is 
pertinent to the growth of the plant. If that was the case, then they shouldn't have to have fans or whatnot, and it should just grow within that area without having to exhaust to the outside atmosphere. Well, what they're trying to do with that, with fans and so forth, I believe, check with Julie, but uh, I think that that is to, for odor control, not for growing control. Is that, is that right, Julie? That's right. Well, also for heat and cooling. Which would be for growing control. Right, but something isn't growing unless it's in a growing medium. I, I think this comes, well, for one thing, it's, it's the ZBA's determination here that, that obtains. And I think the ZBA could determine that the setback is necessary for odor prevention as well as for um, cultivation, but that's, that's a different issue. And they have not formally addressed our issue about uh, marijuana establishment versus indoor cultivation. So, but unfortunately, Michael, our opinion on this subject isn't especially relevant because they are the uh, enforcers of, or deciders on the pure zoning issues. Okay, well, I thank you for listening and, uh, and your responses in the uh, direction in which the board is looking. It's, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Any other comments from the public? Oh, just one other thing. When she said there's no septic work or anything else, what kind of cleanliness facilities will be provided for the worker? Is that a legitimate ask? Sure. We'll have portable sinks and there's also a porta potty on site. Oh, okay. Okay, so as far as I can see now is going forward is um, physically how we want to determine, uh, we're still waiting for approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. And I would think that we could probably set up a, a meeting to accept, formally accept the site plan and set, um, set up hearing date, a public hearing date at that time. So that, I do have a question about that, Don. Um, and it does, you know, there is this, given that they have submitted a site plan application with a date, do we, can we sort of indefinitely defer accepting the site plan application um, versus, you know, essentially accepting it, starting a clock ticking, um, and and then just being careful to do continuations as needed. Sounds like you, Don, you were saying that we might still not tonight accept the site plan application and wait till a subsequent meeting. Did I hear that correctly? Well, the, what the agreement that we made in the initial meeting was that once the site or the um, CBA had had given the special permit, then we would start on uh, start the clock rolling. So, as far as I'm concerned, I have no problem with setting up a five minute meeting, okay. a regular meeting to um, accept this and then set the date. If anybody else has got uh, a different take on this, I'd be glad to hear it. Well, we could do it the same way we did last time and schedule it conditionally based on well that's still in effect. right that's still in effect but it, we don't know at this point when the zba will approve the special permit yeah but do we have i guess what i'm asking is do we have to have that second meeting could we schedule it for our next meeting if in fact Conditional on the ZBA granting the yeah. permit. 
I tend to like that idea, Judy, that we schedule the public hearing of for 149 Christian Lane at our next meeting, which would be, I guess, in January, um, conditional on site uh, special permit approval from the ZBA, just to kind of move things along. Would that be acceptable to you, Julie? That would be fine. I see on the town calendar, the next planning board meeting is the 28th. Is that? I would correct? be surprised if it were then. <laughs> yeah, it's difficult. We could, we could decide We could decide that now, but it might, I would opt to move it till the following week. Yeah, I think that would be wise. Which I don't think you would mind either, Julie, right? <laughs> no. So that could be as early as the 4th of January. Tuesday, the 4th of January. Well, let's go ahead and set it for tentatively and conditionally. So let me ask about the, given that we have to advertise public hearings, what, two weeks in advance. Um, when is the, <laughs> Now I'm suddenly having second thoughts. I, on the one I want to expedite this, can somebody please comment on, like, do we advertise it as if it's going to happen and then potentially cancel it? No, or what we will we'll need to know is right after the meeting if okay. they got approval or not. And if they have, then we will advertise it. And if they haven't, we will not. And right. we will assume that we will not be discussing it at that meeting. All right, hey, so when is the next ZBA meeting where they would decide whether or not to issue a special permit? That's what I was just gonna ask Mary if she knew, because I, well, I didn't their hear norm, it. Their normal, <laughs> their normal meeting time is the first Thursday of the month. Um, I don't have ZBA in my head right now. I work really hard to keep them separate from the planning board. Okay, so they have even they're doing their their visit. They're planning on addressing this again that first Thursday, I believe. Yeah, they did. They said that, that was they may have even. The only a, thing I, I, I think that I think you may even have the first agenda slot because there there wasn't anything else at yeah. the time so so then that meeting that time would not work so why don't we just yeah i don't see any other zba meetings on the town calendar in december aside from the site no, there aren't any the there aren't right. any right so why don't we just schedule an, an item at our next meeting on January 4th to see about setting a date for a pub public hearing. Did you just say you you want to schedule the, a planning board meeting for January 4th? Yeah. Uh, we're, we're to have I it. think our December, I think we've decided informally that our yeah. December 28th meeting will be January 4th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And and I assume then that they won't meet till January 6th. So I I have a procedural question. Fred Olasky on a butter. I'm here as an as an abutter, not as a as a committee member of any group. Uh, it sounds like your your planning board is waiting for ZBA to make a decision. Or no, you, well, I wouldn't say decision. Make approval is what you're implying. That once ZBA approves it, that you're going to approve it. Shouldn't the planning board be acting independently of what ZBA decides? Uh, that's not not what what the issue is at all. We're waiting for a, an issue would to be waived or be approved by the the Zoning Board of Appeals um, so that we can make our decision based on other things. They've, they, they may or may not approve the, the setbacks as they are. Which, right. 
given the constraints of this site, there's very little we can do till we know the exact configuration of the lot and the site and the setbacks. Because so, don't you have uh, that that's information? that's not always true, but in this case it is. So already and it's changed once. And if it so it's very it's it's a waste of time and, and the public's time to for us to talk about things like safety and lighting and screening and drainage and stuff like that when, when the plan keeps changing. So are you saying uh, the plan that was submitted for part of this meeting is not the final plan? Well, I think it could well change. They, they've frequently... Well. Okay. A lot of these change. I, I, I can't think of a marijuana growing plan that's only had one revision that we've looked at yet. Well, let, me, let me at least try to summarize it. My understanding of the situation, Fred, and why, the, why we're waiting on ZBA. There is a question about the side setbacks. The marijuana bylaw says that marijuana establishments must respect 50 foot setbacks on either side from their side property lines. The current plan in the planning board's view is non-conforming with the zoning bylaws by virtue of the fact that there are structures, part of the marijuana establishment that extend beyond the 50 foot setback towards the property lines on either side. And, it, and it's the planning board's view that it's not our purview to, um, proceed with public hearings and approve site plans that are non-conforming with zoning bylaws. And that, that's why we're seeking the Zoning Board of Appeals to weigh in on whether they would grant, uh, basically take the position that this plan as currently submitted by Green Jeans Farms is in their view, compliant with the zoning bylaws, right? So we, we understand the plan to be non-conforming to the zoning bylaws and we wouldn't normally approve a non-conforming plan. Does that make sense? Have I yes, captured sir. that right from Don and Judy's perspective? Yes, but also I think occasionally we might go ahead and talk about things where there's a lot of other stuff that needs that we can deal with while, while the ZBA is discussing, but that I don't think in this case that's true, so. Well, it, I, I'm not I, disagreeing with you, Grant, except that, you know, with, with something like the, the, store, the storage thing where the self-storage up on State Road, where there was a lot of issues about what trees would be maintained and mm -hmm. um, the height of the road and the that kind of thing that aren't necessarily zoning issues we could get we could get our hands into first here mm -hmm. there's not very much of that kind of thing well I, I guess as a butter I'd like to see what the final plan is, is going to look like if, if this is not the final plan, I think that's something that needs to present it to to the uh, to the abutters to know what what we're looking at. Uh, well, obviously, Fred. I mean, every time a plan changes, the it has to be re reviewed. So, and the public gets to look at it. Okay. Yeah, I guess the the other the other concern as an abutter I have is and others have spoken up is is the odor control. I guess we have some there's some concern of how that's going to be addressed and and maintained. I guess more so rather than just saying we're going to control odor. How's it going to be maintained? Yeah. But I guess that's something that will be uh, discussed further. I'm sure it will. Yeah. yeah. I have no doubt. Well, it would be nice if somebody had been able to start actually growing marijuana. We could find out how well that works, but <laughs> so far we're just going on hearsay. One thing that that uh, 
the ZBA did express interest in perhaps hiring an engineer to consult on the adequacy of the proposed proposed uh, odor control. And I failed to point out to them that we had recommended to the to the select board that when we do start to get some marijuana community impact fees, that they be used to hire an engineer to, to help uh, monitor this and, and create a formal program that would be fair both to growers and abutters. So I suspect there'll be further movement on that. Any other comments from the public? Okay, so Julie, we will, um, in our meeting on the 4th, is it? January 4th. January 4th, um, we will hope to see you and set a meeting date, or a public hearing date. Sounds Julie, one, one piece of information that I don't think was in your package is the lot coverage ratio. We will need a formal calculation of that. Okay, I believe it's in the notes of the plan. But, but those have changed, so. Um, I think it's up to date, but let me check on that and I okay. will have an answer for the next meeting, if that works. Well, I haven't read the notes for a long time, but. Okay. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you everyone for the feedback. I appreciate it. I'll see you on okay. the 4th. Thank you. Okay. Huh. I lost my uh, agenda thing. What's next on the agenda? Resource replacement fee. Ah. Just what you always wanted to talk about. Well. Sorry to let you know this, but my, my interest is very low on this. You should have gotten a document from me. Yep. Yeah. Um, we, we, this is just so you know what's going on. Um, the board has no formal formal advisory role here but I am, I'm sure, authorized to bring any comments you have back to them. Um, the, the group has been spent quite a bit of time struggling to come up with a rationale for how to calculate this fee. It's supposed to be a per acre fee on every parcel that comes out of chapter, which is the, the special lower tax rates for farmland and timberland and um, is taken for large solar scale, large scale solar facilities. And Hannah very nicely and brilliantly found that Littleton, Massachusetts had a transfer of development rights proposal that used existing property tax data to, to calculate their, their transfers in a similar situation. Theirs was from uh, commercial to residential, but it is quite similar. And so what they do is take the difference between the value of the land at market value and the value that's the assessed value that's, excuse me, used for for the chapter tax calculations, which, and the, the latter one is assigned by the, is given by the state. And the first is this assessed by the town or calculated by the town. And that technically is, the, is what the town is saying the value of the land as developed is. So the difference between the two is sort of the value of protection or what it would cost to, to put on an APR conservation restriction, um, theoretically. And this isn't always, doesn't always work out quite that way. But anyway, this, these are 
I, I called it sort of official data. I mean, they're used for transactions. They are, they're readily available. The assessor's office has them. They can calculate them for the town as a whole annually. And so we're moving ahead, looking at those, that as a way to calculate this fee. Um, on average, it would be about $4,000 an acre. And so the Ag Commission and the CONCOM are looking at that now. That's all I have to say. That was pretty clear to me. So this will be a one-time fee? Yeah, but whether it's assessed all, we haven't gotten to whether you pay it up front or over time, but I imagine it would be assessed up front, but. To be determined. Yes, sir. We also learned that now, and this is probably more interesting, the state regulations for the incentives have changed. And in order to grow, to, in order to put a large solar field on prime agricultural land now, you have to do dual use solar. So you have to have a some sort of agricultural use simultaneously with the solar. And that means that you can't have any more than 50% of the area shaded. It also probably means that the panels have to be higher. Mm -hmm. And I think they use tracking panels primarily. Mm -hmm. But my guess is, and this is purely conjectural, but my guess is that that will mean we'll see a lot fewer demand for solar in Waitley because I, I would think that 50% reduction would be a, a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Is wait to what extent is Waitley vulnerable to some of the things going on in nearby towns like Amherst, Belchertown, et cetera, where forest lands might be taken and partly clear cut for ground mounted solar? Very. <laughs> Maybe not as much because a lot of our forest land is priority protected as priority uh, landscapes for Anna, help me. <laughs> Things, um, uh, environmentally sensitive areas, but, okay. and it's also, it's also fairly steep in some areas. But yeah, it's it's an issue. Okay. But this this fee would apply to timberland as well. So okay. and the ownership is very fractured too. In, in yeah, that's 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 a very good point. You don't have anything like coals that has a large acreage. I see. And so Tom, you 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 add that to the dialogue to say that the fractured nature of ownership would make it more challenging for ground mounted solar to come in and take large swaths of land and clear, is that right? Well, well rather than the coals type of project where you've got hundreds of acres to work with, we're trying to put a coalition of, of property owners who have 25, 15, 100. So, right. you, so there's a layer of, to make a five, a five acre isn't, isn't, isn't gonna, um, and think clearing forest for five acres yeah. with all the issues associated with that is not, is not worth it. The business plan isn't going to work. Right. Okay. And we do have a 10 acre limit on solar. But and I noticed in Shrewsbury, they have two, quote, two projects that are essentially adjacent. So I, I'm not quite sure how this... Yeah. How that would be interpreted. And could you also remind me, please, how the resource um, replacement fees might be applied to um, solar projects that have already gone into town, or is this only for ones um, yet to be proposed? 
it's it's only the the other was just put in place by the recent bylaw revision, so it doesn't apply to the previous ones. I see. Okay. Okay. Else on that? So uh, the next is our waiver signing discussion. Um, and looking at some of the emails have gone back and forth on this. Basically, when we get a, um, a notice from a adjoining town saying that they're going to have a public hearing, uh, we've just been looking at it. And if it doesn't appear to have much to do with what we're, what's going on here, uh, we've basically just said, okay, fine, and not really done anything about it. Uh, this situation, Brent, you've done some research on that, and do you want to explain uh, what you put out in the email today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, give me just one quick second to, uh, uh, yeah. Bring well, he's up. talking. I'm not sure everybody knows that the state requires that if there's a zoning issue that abutting towns get a, a notice so right. they yes. can attend the public hearing. That's right. That's right. Okay. So the situation for um, for all of us is that um, Deerfield, the town of Deerfield, had a town meeting on October fourth of this year, and they voted to approve a bylaw revision. And what that revision did, uh, it only applies to town-owned lots that are used for municipal facilities. And furthermore, it only applies to such lots that are in one of three zoning districts. One zoning district is the center village residential district. Another one is the small business district. And a third is the industrial district, all right? So this only applies to town-owned lots for municipal facilities in these three zoning districts, all right? And what they wanted to do is, and what they did in this zoning bylaw revision is they reduced the minimum frontage, not setbacks, frontage from 100 feet to 50 feet, all right? So less, less distance allowed on a, on a public way, all right? It happens, I was looking at Waitley and I was, Curious to just see, like we actually don't have minimum frontage on any in any zoning district that is less than like 175 feet. So just by comparing like zone, you know, Waitley and Deerfield, like they started with 100, which is already 75 feet smaller than what we ever have anywhere. And they're gonna reduce it for just these town owned lots in just those three districts from 100 to 50 feet, all right? So that was what they were trying to do. And I've had some email with um, the town administrator at, um, you know, in, in Deerfield to just understand. And, and it was explained to me that Deerfield wanted to make this change so that they could develop some municipal facilities like a town park, economic development in the center of town that's around an existing municipal parking lot. And they may even want to do some senior housing, all right? So, and they don't have, in, the, in these three districts, they don't have a lot of, you know, big lots with lots of frontage. They don't have great access. So they're trying to, you know, improve connectivity. Um, and that, that's why they wanted to reduce fr the minimum frontage for just these municipal town-owned purposes from 100 feet to 50 feet. All right, so they went through all of this and they had, um, they had two public hearings on this bylaw revision. They did the first one on September 13th and they notified everybody. It went in the newspaper, we got a notification. Um, so there was a public hearing with proper notice to abutting towns for the September 13th hearing on this bylaw revision. It came up, however, that the original bylaw 
only had two zoning districts listed, center village residential and um, small business. It didn't include the industrial district in the first rev of this. But after the first public hearing, they said, you know what? The municipal parking lot is in the industrial district. They want this bylaw to revision. They want this reduced frontage to apply to the municipal parking lot as well. So they had to amend the bylaw revision to add the industrial district. So they expanded it from town owned lots in two districts to town owned lots in three districts. And that required them to do a second public hearing, which they did on September 30th. And that's where the problem came in. They advertised it. I mean, they did hold a public hearing on September 30th. They advertised it in the newspaper, but they failed to provide notice to abutting towns like Waitley of that second public hearing, all right? And so what Deerfield has asked, this is one of those, you know, and we've encountered this ourselves, right? A defect in how we provide notice of certain public hearings. So Deerfield would rather not, or they're, they're seeking to avoid the time, cost and expense and delay of, you know, advertising this public hearing uh, yet again. And I think holding another public hearing, that part I'm a little unclear about. I think they I would asked, have to take the town meeting again. Yeah, yeah. So what they have asked for those of us who were in theory harmed by the lack of notification of that second public hearing on September 30th, they're asking about surrounding towns. And also I think the Franklin County Regional Planning Board was also not notified. They're asking all the surrounding towns and the Franklin County Planning Board to sign a waiver of notice for that second hearing, all right? So in effect, we are being asked to look at the situation and say, how harmed are we by the failure to receive notice, formal notice um, of the second public hearing, all right? Now, I'll just make a few comments and then just open it for, for Q&A and I can show some diagrams depending on how far you all want to go with this. My personal opinion is I've looked at the three zoning districts in question in, in Deerfield, namely Center Village Residential, Industrial, and um, Small Business. And I've looked to see where those districts like touch Waitley. And I've looked at whether um, you know, what Waitley properties and property owners, also I looked at which of the lots nearby in Waitley, you know, would be near town owned lots in those districts and, and, and I'm not finding any. I'm finding, it I'm finding myself hard pressed personally to um, identify harm to us you know, we, there was the first public hearing. We knew that they wanted to do this. Um, we had the opportunity if we chose to attend that first public hearing. Though again, that was only, that didn't include the industrial district. So we didn't necessarily know on September 30th that they intended to include the industrial district in this revision. Um, and we didn't get the notice of the second one. But I'm, I'm looking around to try to figure out who is going to be harmed in Waitley by a Deerfield revision that reduces frontage from 100 feet to 50 feet. And I'm really coming up kind of empty. The, the sewer, um, sewer uh, plant that is just south of 116 is a town owned lot in an industrial district. Um, but again, we're not talking about setbacks. We're talking about frontage on, on public ways. And the, the public way is 
solidly within Deerfield. And again, I found myself looking hard for cases where we would be harmed. We, like if we'd only known that the industrial district was also included, boy, we would have had an opinion. So there's a long-winded way, sorry for it being a long-winded way, but it's a long-winded way of saying, my recommendation is that we sign this waiver of notice. This is, a, it's a, a one-time thing. We're just saying we waive the need to have been notified of that September 30th meeting. It doesn't apply to future meetings. It doesn't apply to any other things that Deerfield might do about other bylaw revisions. It's just basically saying we're okay with the fact that we didn't get notification of this public hearing that took place on September 30th. Second. So, so that's a, I guess I'm making a motion. So I made a motion <laughs> that Judy- You did uh, make a motion. Did I make a motion? I didn't yeah. say that I was making a motion. I said I was recommending. So I'll actually make a motion that the board um, sign the waiver of notice of the Deerfield September 30th public hearing on this bylaw revision. And Judy is second still that seconding at that? Yes. Okay. Don, I saw your lips move. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to amend a, a motion. So why, do, why doesn't the board authorize the chair to sign it? I accept that friendly amendment. Any other discussion? Uh, call roll. Sarah? Yes, as amended, I approve. Don, approved. Judy? Yes. Brent? Yes, as amended. Tom? Yes. Okay, the motion carries. Um, they, I haven't seen a copy of that. Did you get a copy, Brent? I do have a copy of the letter. I did circulate. A lot of emails went around and uh, it was you know, attached to the first email, I think. Okay. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll get oh, it yeah maybe. Okay. Um, I've got one thing that I'd like to add, um, similar to what we just discussed. We failed to do something on the when we held this second of uh, the, um, the meeting on the zoning change. And, and which zoning change? Uh, for the one next to uh, Monahan's. Okay. Wendelowski? Wendelowski. So we, we now have to do something similar. Do we have to do um, we have to we have to reschedule. We have to redo the public hearing. Okay. And do we want to move on that um, in the new year as soon as possible, or? Well, I, if we, yeah, we should we should do it before town meeting certainly, or enough time to get it on town meeting. Yeah. If we need to do a public hearing, then I would say do it later in January. Do it at our at our normal planning board meeting in January it would be late January. Yeah, I wouldn't do it so close to the holidays as right. the board. Yeah. So that would be the 25th of January. So Don, is that what you're so is that the emerging consensus that we would schedule a public hearing on the zoning change um, involving Wendelowski's property on Tuesday, the 25th of January. Sounds good. Now, do we have to again go through the notification of a butters and all of that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. And that's something that is that Mary handles that? Yeah, I'll, I'll draft the the ad and we can have the ad ready to go as of the 4th, which should give us, it can look it over then and okay. uh, should give us time to get it in paper and, and everything. Sure. 
And because it's a zoning change, she has to notify the other towns too. <laughs> the other thing that I've had some concern about is how do we get some of the stuff that we're working on out to more people? And that's not something that I think we can solve right now, but mm -hmm. I we, we talked about it in the uh, uh, Frank, Franklin Regional Planning Board uh, executive session this week. Yeah. And it's, it's a real problem. You get a lot of people, once you try to do a, take something to town meeting, you get a lot of people objecting and so forth. And it would have been nice if they just showed up for any meetings. So I don't know if, if we can maybe talk to the recorder and let them know about upcoming stuff because when they've talked about stuff that just happened, you know, we get some reaction then. So I don't know if that's the way to go, but I just like people to start thinking about that. We can talk about it at the next meeting. I have two well, thoughts wait, that I'd like to just put out there. Oh, and I, and I know I heard another voice, but um, um, one that I've been wondering myself, because I'm glad you brought this up, Don. I've been thinking about this too, about how much important stuff goes on in this these meetings that many people may not be following or aware of. So I thought one open question is, could one even, of course, there's not a lot of room, I imagine, in the, you know, Waitley scoop, but I, you know, the Waitley scoop arrives in paper form, like, and has a lot of little notes from all kinds of places in town. Though I don't know that there's a precedent for a, um, a board like the planning board that get a little item into the scoop. But I wanna sort of surface an idea like maybe that could work. Um, and I could, ha I would be happy to help draft items for the Waitley scoop. And two, Waitley now has a Facebook page and people are subscribing to it. I don't know how many followers it has. Maybe there's a question for Hannah, like, for Hannah to run to ground, like who in town is um, kind of the administrator, you know, owns or runs the Wheatley Town Facebook page because you know, we could get permission to post items on the Wheatley Facebook page, potentially, as another way to get word out of um, some things that we do. Judy? I was going to say that the floodplain bylaw is going to be a, a good test case of this because we're really going to have to push for education, of the, especially yeah. of the farming community. And I think that's going to take some very proactive outreach. Yeah. But um, the, sec the other point I'd make in conjunction with the Facebook page is that um, amazing number of people seem to watch us on on local TV, which uh, makes me wonder what they do with their lives. But anyway, they, they do seem to watch these meetings, so. Well, this is not carried on live TV. The, the recordings show up. Uh-huh, do they? Yes. <laughs> okay. Somehow I have to find out where, how or where that happens. I've never seen that myself. We're all, you're telling us we're all TV stars. I wouldn't say stars. The channel go to, go to you go to YouTube and Google Waitley. Well, something just occurred occurred to me. We we occasionally do the uh, robocalls that the, the town clerk does to remind us of stuff. That might be a way to go. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, it's after six o'clock, and my cat has not been fed. Judy's was crawling over hers a while, her a while ago. And she was fed. <laughs> so we, got uh, all these, we have all these minutes. Oh, minutes, I'm sorry. Yeah. Let's do minutes. Mary's worked so hard. <laughs> Actually, just before we get to the minutes, I do want to surface the fact that we do have, at least from the town clerk's perspective, we have some four or five projects that they don't believe are closed, meaning we haven't completed and signed and filed the site plan 
approval application forms with the various conditions. And we and there's a list that includes Three River Road, Seven River Road, 424 State Road, maybe LaSalle. Um, and so what I might, first I just wanna ask the question. I think Don, you should put, I'm, I apologize. Uh, I think you need to add Hannah back on there because when I said we were waiting for them, that was the A&R, not the special permit. Uh-huh. Okay. Having read the minutes. Okay. <laughs> we're a big help. All right. Um, well, the A&R, oh, well, that was for Ashman, not for Hannah. So I'm-, I'm Well, so there was a ha Hannah A&R that we never got to see because he hadn't finalized the plans but we did approve evidently the special permit, which I had forgotten. So or, I, I first want to just ask level. Don whether there's, you know, you've already done all this paperwork and somehow the town clerk doesn't have it, or do we need to just sort of schedule the time? You know, we have all the conditions, I have all the documents. I'd be happy if that would be helpful to like meet you at town offices and just get the four or five of these done and sent out? What makes sense? Let me go through what, what I've got. I've got some rolled up plans that I haven't looked at lately. But the, okay. All Hannum stuff, that might be in there, but I've got some well, other- we've, we've approved them all done. What's, what's, it, what's at issue is the, the, is the, the, signed, the signed approvals. I remember dropping a couple of those off that they supposedly don't have because I, uh, got them out to some of the uh, some of the parties that were looking for their their approval. Yeah. And um, I dropped off stuff at the town office the same day I mailed them out. So, but I'm gonna I've got a stack of stuff here. I'll go through that and and just make sure that they went out or. Uh, got our copies and we can make another copy of that. Anyway, on to the, uh, so you and I can, I'll get together with you, Brent. Yeah, let's do that. So on to the approval of minutes. All right. So should we start, should we do this in a little bit of a logical order in 2021? and start at the oldest minutes that Mary has delivered and work our way towards the present? Yes. All right, so I can confirm that we have approved minutes for January 26th and for February 9th. And then the, it's February 23rd is the first set of minutes where we don't. Uh, and those have been circulated. Maybe I'll share my screen to help people. I'll share this Word document. All right. And we'll put this in page width mode. All right. So this one has been marked up by me and by Judy. Um, Let me see, just make sure that people can see all the markup. And so I'm just gonna, I don't know how, what people would like me to do in terms of showing what's been done. Here's the, okay, so this is an issue. So this was in the discussion about, um, at the uh, LaSalle property, all right? So we had the public hearing, we had a discussion, and then we further discussed conditions and arrived at a list of four things. In Mary's original notes, all she had was a water recirculation system, and I didn't understand what that was. I think the first one made sense to me, a planting plan, um, a revised energy plan. So I remember we were talking about their energy use because they were fairly energy intensive. 
and we ask that they be thinking about use of solar within three years. So I think that is an accurate capture of what we talked about. There was something about our standard language. So I'll come back to the third one in a moment because that's what I need help on. The fourth one I think is straightforward. This is the language that I've highlighted that we have been putting in to um, cultivation operations relating to odor. So that would be the fourth condition that we can uh, require additional mitigating conditions. All right, but I do not know what, certainly a water recirculation system is not a site approval condition that well, I can think. I think all it's saying is that they should, they should be reusing the water for irrigation and which they said they would do. And I think it's quite fine as it is. Yeah, it so, actually, they were the uh, ones that, that said that they were, were using it and we didn't even suggest that. We just agreed with the fact that they were, are planning on using a recirculating system. That's but it. we wanted to make sure they were because, because of the, some of the drainage issues in the river. So I, I think it's fine. Well, what do you mean it's fine? Just a the way, noun the way phrase, a water recirculation system as a condition? Yeah. We are re you said you do it. We want to make sure you do. We're requiring it. Well, there should be a verb in there. There's no verb. It's just a noun. <laughs> well, no, that's, that's a requirement. The requirement is? Water recirculation system. Well, this is these are these are also minutes. The actual yeah. conditions on the yeah. approval form does don't have to formally don't have to be word for word the same. Well, the problem is yes, I hear you, Judy. But the minutes at the moment are the only record that we have okay. well, of the conditions. I don't, I don't think there's any disagreement about what it refers to. So let me understand what you're saying, Judy, that you're proposing that the third condition simply be a water recirculation system. Should be designed and, designed and documented. So you would, uh, a water recirculate, okay, I like what Tom said, should. Uh, those, are, those are standard greenhouse stuff. I, that's overkill to, put anything else in there as far as I'm concerned. I mean, the, the, the thousands of greenhouses are using recirculation systems. It's a, it's a industry standard just about. Well, given so, that the deal, the deal is dead, I'm not sure how much time we should spend on this, but. Oh, the deal is dead. Yeah. Never mind. All right, well, all right, so I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna get rid of um, this and I'm gonna accept that. Okay. And then, uh, all right, so Judy, so I'm just gonna move on then. So Judy made some changes about the addition of the three scenic roads. Um, she added a comment related to the discussion of zoning bylaw changes. And, and now I forget, Sarah, did you? I got that to Mary. Okay. I did get that, Sarah. I... Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I'm just going to just make a little note here. All right. So is it then we can simply have a motion oh, and I corrected the spelling of my name. Thank you very much. Um, so, I'm gonna fix that. so then we have a motion to approve these minutes as amended. So, so moved. moved. 
Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Don, yes. Sarah? Yes. Tom? Yes. Judy? Yes. Brent? Yes. Approved as amended. Okay. So, so I'm going to get rid of the old. So there's only one set of minutes in the OneDrive, Mary, so that have all these markups. So you should use the one, the updated draft minutes in OneDrive for February 23rd as your starting point, okay? All right. All right, moving on to, uh, we don't, we're good with March 16th. Minutes were posted and approved. March 30th is the next meeting date where we have minutes. So I'm gonna, Judy and I, I think Judy and I may have marked this up. If maybe we should find out if other people have read them and if they agree, if, if so, we could perhaps waive discussing, but if not, yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, if we've all read them. I didn't um, get to the revisions. Those came in later, but okay. the initial ones. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so this is, you know, strangely. So this one must have just come out. This, did that you, was the last one. Did Judy, Judy, you sent this March 30th around earlier today or later, later this afternoon? I think I did. Right. Yeah, so I haven't had a chance to look it over. So should we just defer March 30th to the next meeting? Okay. Okay. All right, so then, uh, The next one is April 13th. Oh, no, we have approved minutes are up on the website. April 27th. No, we don't have minutes for April 27th yet. Or May 11th. Yeah, the 25th. Uh, it looks like June 29th is the next date for which we have minutes yet to be approved. And I, de I reviewed those, marked those up. That was the one, that was the meeting concerning Three River Road, DMCTC. And also Sovereign Builders, self-storage. I had just one comment in addition to yours in the, on page two, okay. the third paragraph from the bottom security. Knox box is spelled with a K, K-N-O-X. <laughs> uh, I thought they were punning. <laughs> To, I'm sorry, the bottom of page two, what were you saying? It's the third paragraph on the bottom. I didn't count. It's headed security, the last line in that paragraph. Knox boxes? Knox boxes. She's written N-O-X and it's actually K-N-O-X. Okay. And I don't think I've ever seen it in written form before. People talk about it all the time. I apologize. Um, well, if Mary has it, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not exactly okay. a, a difficult yeah. change to make. No, it's true. Okay. So then uh, I'll move to approve the minutes of June 29th as corrected. I'll second. Any discussion? Sarah? Yes. 
Tom, I'm Tom. Yes. Tom. Yes. Judy. Yes. Yes. Motion carries the approved. Okay. All right, so that took care of June 29th. Get rid of the old out of date minutes. All right, July 27th is the next date we're reviewing minutes. And Judy and I looked them over and marked them up. Yeah, so what was going on? So. Yeah, no, I looked at all this, this was good. Yep. All right, so I'll move to approve the minutes as corrected. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay. Moved and seconded. Don, yes. Sarah? Yes. Tom? Yes. Judy? Yes. Grant? Yes. The motion passes. Yes. All right. After that, so now we have draft minutes for the next meeting on August 31st also reviewed by Judy and me and marked up in OneDrive. What's going on there? The Ag Commission. I find it so amusing how the transcription so incorrectly corrects things. <laughs> Ag commission went to and commission. Yeah. Anyway. You know, Keeps us awake. Yeah. Okay. Are you looking at the transcription now? Is that why you mentioned that? Yeah, uh, it's up on my screen. I think you can put it up on yours. Well, we well, don't know anything about how to do that. Um, I did run into it when I was looking in OneDrive. It looked like a, a meeting where you had gotten together to get it up and running maybe or something. And, it, and there's a file in there on that. I looked over the, <laughs> the results and... <laughs> giggled a little but <laughs> yeah especially some of the polish names it's very interesting oh, i'm not talking good. about that I mean, it's stuff that it, trying to suck meaningful detail out of some of that is uh hopeless frankly <laughs> but, but on I, your bottom of the screen you have a cc <laughs> in a live transcript and um i think if you click on that you can turn okay. it on for yourself okay but i Totally. I think I would try it's really to do that skewed. And take notes at the same time. Yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. No. So I just want to confirm, Judy, that the this resource replacement committee is really formally known as the resource replacement fee advisory committee. Is that right? Oh, I, that, okay. I think so. Yes, but I okay. don't think it's a, a earth-shaking matter. All right, then I'm prepared to move to accept these minutes as corrected. Second. Um, I'm looking at section four and we had talked about that the, the, the uh, previous meeting. And I guess, you know, basically, it says a lot of what we said here, but I, 
my my memory is not that we discussed it twice, but I guess we must have. So, yeah, we did. Okay. All right. So that was John. That was about the large scale solar setbacks. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred to fifty. Yeah, that's right. Because he showed up the meeting before, and then we talked about it smart because he called me back. I remember now. Okay. So, any further discussion? Okay, Don. Yes, Sarah. Yes. Tommy. Um, yes. Judy. Yes. Yes. Motion passed unanimously. Okay. So interestingly, I go into one drive and get anything I need for. Correction. Yeah, I'm making sure that all the, that the OneDrive meeting folders always have only one document that has minutes in the file name and it's has all the relevant markup. This, so we're not keeping multiple copies of right. minutes files there. Whatever I find in there when I go will be the yeah. approved corrections. Yeah, that's correct. Now I see in OneDrive that we have a minutes of September 28th. Is that the Judy ones? Uh, the Judy ones. Yes, it is. Well, I know I, it seems to me I saw some minutes that Judy had written and they uh, were in, in OneDrive. Yeah. They, it was all corrections, but it looked like it was also being called approved. So I assume maybe in October yeah. people approved yeah, this is That's correct. I see that Judy signed it, respectfully submitted at the end. So the only problem I had with that was I don't, I cannot get rid of the draft. I don't know where it is in the, the word processor thing that I'm using. Can you get Oh, me? oh you mean the um, watermark? <laughs> Yes, the watermark. watermark. I found where it is in this thing once months ago, and I don't know you if go I'll to, press it again. You're in, <laughs> well, you can take it out for her, Brent. Yeah. So that, that was my question. Could you please remove that? <laughs> and I can get it posted. I'll send it for posting since it's been approved. <laughs> okay. So I will remove the watermark from the September. 28th approved minutes and let you know when that's done. And then the last one, oh my God, is October 26th, where we have draft minutes. <laughs> we could be like up to date after this. Uh, not oh. exactly. There's a couple that still need to be written for, uh, let's see. There's oh. April 27th and May 11th. They have not been written yet. Those will be the only two left for this okay. year. All right. So October 26th was the uh, inaugural performance of Hannah Davis as a note taker pro tem. She did an awesome job. Judy, looks like Judy and I went through it. We, um, Hannah didn't list Tom as one of the members present. So I've added him at the top, but he was definitely there and he appears later on in the minutes. So, uh, and I just made a couple of corrections, changing zoning board of approvals to zoning, zoning board of appeals. But otherwise it looks like, uh, This is all complete and accurate. So I would move to accept the minutes of October 26th as corrected. Sarah, oh. did you have time to read those? I didn't fully get them to them either. Did, yeah, so maybe we want to defer read. those. Yeah. Okay. So, so we have October 26th, March 30th, or deferred to next meeting, and Mary has a couple more. She's going to get up, and then we'll be there. Yes. Nice. Thanks, Mary. Yeah. Thank you. And Hannah. And Hannah. 
Okay. So that may be it. Um, the last thing is just to share, Hannah and I have been following up since we've been in town offices a couple of times recently, following up on the email that Judy sent sort of summarizing tasks, sort of what tasks the community development coordinator might do to support success of the planning board. Uh, and it seemed like there should be a follow-up meeting with who, whoever member, whichever members of the planning board would like to participate in that conversation. It should be more than just me and Hannah. It doesn't have to be a public meeting, I don't believe, because we're not talking about town business. We're just talking about how we will identify tasks and work with Hannah and she with us. So I was going it has to recommend- to be posted. It has to be posted if there are more than two people. From the from the board, even if we're not talking even about if, anything, even if. <sighs> so that's more than that's more than two, Judy. Yeah, quorum is three. Okay. Well, I, I would, Hannah Hannah is not a board member, right. so she doesn't count yeah. for that. Yeah, Brad, I would I'd be willing to sit down with the two of you, and that would give us one more voice. Okay, I would. That would work for me. To have us, because um, I don't think we, this really should be or need. I mean, not to hide anything. I mean, it's just purely administrative. I wouldn't. I just don't feel this is a good use of a public meeting to have a conversation with how the community development coordinator will support the planning board. So yeah, Don. I think why don't we? Um, I'll reach out to you. I think if we can maybe even this week on Thursday. If you're available this Thursday, possibly to find some time to meet up at town offices, then I can we can coordinate. We can work through all the paperwork that we need to work through, and um, and then we can have a meeting with Hannah. How does that sound? What's your schedule like on Thursday? Um, let me take a quick look. Thursday, I've got nothing. Okay, very good. I will be in touch. Um, I'll be in touch by phone. I want to look at what my schedule is like too. And maybe it'll ideally morning would be probably best. Okay. Then are we through with our agenda such that there could be somebody could make a motion to adjourn or are there other things? I think I just heard one. Do I have a second? Second. Oh, well, love this board. Um, the uh, meeting.